Hey y'all, it's Danny, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the viral mom, dad, mama, keepsake sweatshirts with onesies. I'm also gonna show you guys how to export your SVG files from your embroidery software to your Cricut in Cricut Design Space, and then get them onto your machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave me any questions or comments down below. If you would like to purchase a keepsake sweatshirt from me, please please visit theartsofdanny.com. For your supplies, of course, you're gonna need your onesies. I have three different onesies and your client should provide you the onesies or the garments that they want you to use for their keepsake item. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to use for your keepsake is heat and bond. This is soft and stretch heat and bond light. This is nice because it's stretchy, so it's not going to distort your material for our onesies because they are a stretchy knit fabric. The next thing you're gonna need is an iron. I have this little mini iron that I got from my local sewing store. It's super cute and tiny. Any iron will do, but it'll be really nice to get a small craft iron for your projects. The next thing you're going to need is your garment. I'm using a sweatshirt for this, and this one is just a Hanes sweatshirt. The next thing you're going to need is thread, of course. I like to coordinate my threads with the material as well as the sweatshirt so everything is cohesive. As I mentioned, we are using our Cricut to cut out our applique for the letters on the sweatshirt. So I am using the Cricut Standard Grit Mat. This is the really long one, the 12 by 24, if I'm not mistaken. Okay guys, so here we are in Hatch. These are the files that I am going to use for the placement lines. The second file is the tack down and the third is the final stitch. But all you need is the placement file to export into Cricut Design Space. So after you have your placement files in Hatch, Again, this is gonna be different for in Brilliance, but I use Hatch. So you're gonna to go to File, and you're going to go to Export Cutting. Now, when you go to Export Cutting, you're gonna make sure under Objects, you go to Export Current Design. Under Layout, you wanna have it as digitized. You want it as digitized so it all stays together. Now, for Elements, you're gonna to go to Embroidery Shapes and make sure it's under SVG because it's an SVG cutting file. And then I'm just gonna export it to my Downloads folder and then it'll be all ready to go. Here we are in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go to New Project and Blank canvas and then I'm going to go to upload. Now you can see all of my other uploads when I was trying to figure out what I was doing. All you have to do is go to upload image and browse. There is my placement lines SVG and here you see it is the exact same file and lines that were in Hatch. And I made sure to have the middle of the O on top of the bigger O so that it will cut that out. Okay, so everything exported in is gonna automatically be attached. So you want to select it and then you are going to wanna press this button and that's gonna ungroup everything. So it's not gonna cut all separate pieces. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your O in mom and you're gonna to wanna to attach that so that it recognizes it's one shape together. Anything that has two separate cutting lines, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's attached. I hope that makes sense. Now we're gonna go ahead and press make. And as you see, we have our letters here ready to go. Now that we have all of our lines placed into separate parts on the grid of our mat, we're all good to go. Now that my Cricut is connected to my Bluetooth on my laptop, I'm gonna go ahead and browse all of our materials and I'm going to go ahead and choose Jersey and let me bookmark it. So we are using Jersey. So now that I have my base material set to Jersey because they are Jersey knit fabrics, the onesies are, I'm gonna keep my pressure at default and I'm gonna go ahead and load the rotary blade into clamp B and I'm gonna load my mat. So as you guys see, I have my Cricut Maker ready to go. Now I'm gonna prep my onesies for the mat and I also have my iron heating up. Okay, so I am just going to cut out my material. And remember how I said this is that jersey knit, it's stretchy. Okay, so we have all three pieces of material cut out and we are going to iron on the back of our material so that it is ready to be cut. If you do this with these onesies and you don't use your heat and bond or your stretch and bond, it is going to fray the material and you're not going to get a nice clean cut. And you want to make sure that the glossy side is the side that is facing onto your blank side or the wrong side of your onesie or your fabric. Hard 
hard to tell on camera, but it's glossy on the back, so our stretch and bond adhered to the knit fabric well. So now I am just getting everything onto the mat. Okay, y'all, now I'm gonna take out the blade that I had already loaded into clamp B, and I am gonna load my rotary blade into clamp B. Now we are going to load our mat and we are going to start cutting. As I mentioned, it is just cutting out our placement lines so that when we go ahead and take these letters to our embroidery machine, everything will match up perfectly. I'm just going to peel the fabric away and we will have our applique letters ready for our embroidery design. Okay y'all, so now as you can see, we have all of our letters cut out. We are perfectly ready to go to put these on the embroidery machine. So let's go ahead and get them on there now. Okay y'all, now I'm gonna go ahead and hoot my sweatshirt that I showed you earlier in the video. If you have not checked out my Mighty Hoop video, then go ahead and do that because I go in depth on how I hoop my sweatshirts and what stabilizer I use. But for this particular garment, I am using my 11 by 13 Mighty Hoop and my Hoop Master Station with the adjustable fixture. And boom. So as you see, my sweatshirt is all hooped and ready. And now I'm just loading up my design file that you saw in the beginning of the video. And then we're gonna stitch our placement lines and put our applique letters inside. And everything is pretty easy going and super straightforward from there. So I'm just setting my embroidery hoop and frame with the sweatshirt into the summit frame arms. And when you hear those two clicks, that means it's all secure. Okay y'all, so now I'm just setting up my stops and my colors. So what I really like about the summit is that you can see your design and how it's placed within your hoop. So again, I'm using my 11 by 13 Mighty Hoop and that's what I have up on the screen. This first part of the design is our placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and put applique after that because then I'm going to take the hoop off of the machine and put our letters down and after our tack down I'm also going to put applique just so that I can check everything and the final stitch is going to be the names so I think I'm going to do that in this cream okay and we should be all good to go so now I'm gonna do my trace feature and this is essential when you're doing any type of embroidery on any type of machine you want to go ahead and trace your design so that you can make sure that your design is not going to hit your hoop if you have the hoop that you have on the machine entered incorrectly on the summit it is going to tell you where your design fits in the hoop and if my design was out of the hoop per se my machine is gonna go red. So basically it says here that my hoop limits are exceeded and that if I were to proceed with the stitching of this design, my needles would run into my hoop and I would have a bunch of issues and problems that we don't wanna have. I like to make sure visually that I am still within my parameters. So as you can see, it is moving and it is tracing my design out and showing me exactly where my design hits with that red laser. Here is the temporary adhesive spray that I'm using and I'm gonna spray that onto the back of my letters. So the second step in our design process for applique is going to be the tack down. And the tack down is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to tack down our onesie fabric so that it doesn't go anywhere. 
Okay, now that all of our fabric is tacked down, I'm about to run the final stitch. I actually went ahead and changed the final stitch to a satin stitch instead of chain because I wanted you guys to be able to see the final stitching and everything really nice on camera. Our satin stitches are done and now we are just gonna run the names. Y'all, look at how adorable this came out. We cut out our letters using our Cricut and baby onesies, and it is so stinking cute. I was never able to do this in my shop because I had my glitter HTV applique sweatshirts pop off at the same time that I tried to do these, and I had to choose one. Again, these are just so adorable, and I hope I can make some orders for these. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something. I will link my Amazon Amazon storefront and my affiliate links in the description. I hope you guys really enjoyed making this keepsake onesie sweatshirt with me and stay tuned for so many more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.